In a Zoroastrian tradition, Mithra was an all-seeing figure co-identified with the sun itself. No one knows why this occurs, but the answer can be realised in the Squatterman question. Wait till you hear this. Mithra of the shining light that beholds everything. According to the myth, Mithra was born bearing a torch and armed with a sword beside a sacred stream and under a sacred tree. The tree of course becomes a squatter man and this context is telling us Mithra developed as a manifestation under the tree of life and this is when the great god Ahura Mazda became flanked by the two. The Yasts are a collection of 21 hymns in the younger Avestan language and each of these hymns invokes a specific Zoroastrian divinity or concept. The Avestan hymn to Mithra, Yas 10, is the longest and one of the best preserved of the Yasts. Mithra is described in the Zoroastrian Avestan scriptures as Mithra of wide pastures, of the thousand ears and of the myriad eyes. The lofty and everlasting, the province ruler, the Yazad divinity of the spoken name, the Holy One. The Corda of Esther, the Book of the Common Prayer, also refer to Mithra in the Litany to the Sun, homage to Mithra of wide cattle pastures, whose word is true, who is of the assembly, who has a thousand ears, the well-shaped one, who has ten thousand eyes, the exalted one, who has a wide knowledge, the helpful one who sleeps not, the ever wakeful, we sacrifice to Mithra, the lord of all countries, whom Ahura Mazda created, the most glorious of the supernatural Yazads, so may there come to us for aid, both Mithra and Ahura, the two exalted ones, I shall sacrifice to his mace, well aimed against the skulls of the devas. Some recent theories have claimed that Mithra represents the sun itself, that the Corda Avesta refers to the sun as a separate entity altogether, as it does with the moon, with which the sun has the best of friendships with the moon. According to the Corda Avesta, a pattern again emerges. Another ancient culture, one of the most ancient, tells us that the great god, whom shone brightest, is flanked by other gods and that the sun and the moon are not part of this apparition. In the 1970s, an underground vaulted room near the port of Caesarea Maritima was discovered by a team of archaeologists, and this one was special. During the beginning of the 2nd century in the current era, AD, it was converted into the temple of the god Mithras by the Romans. This god Mithras, originally worshipped as Mithra, was a recent import into the Roman world, but the mysterious cult rapidly acquired a vast popularity throughout the entire Roman Empire, found from Egypt to England, from the Crimea to Portugal, and especially on the Legion headquarters along the Roman borders. Most Mithria, as they are called, are underground or excavated in the rock, so as to represent the mythical abode in which the god manifested from plasmatic instabilities radiating in the sky. The rock grotto is to display where the god was seen, above the highest mountain in the arc of the sky, disappearing on the horizon as far as the eye can see. And they all look alike, these grottos. In the central niche is an altar supporting a relief with the central scene of the cult. Mithras stabs the primordial bull with a dagger, while some animals, a dog, a scorpion, and a snake take active part in the proceedings. And these are the animals of the earth portrayed to describe death and chaos as plasma rained down from the figure in the sky. And while archaeologists were working on this discovery, they noted a shaft in the vault from which sunlight shone at midday near the altar. As the days go by, the light rays come closer and closer to the altar until it shone directly on the altar on June the 21st, the summer solstice. According to the philosopher Porphyry, who probably visited Caesarea in his youth and later married a Caesarian woman, the Mithraists believed that the soul entered the human body at birth and left it at death following the direction of the solstice. The Caesarea Mithrium was then a faithful representation of the mythical cosmos, 
In addition to this, the direction of the sunset in the summer solstice, as seen from Caesarea, has an extraordinary property. It passes almost exactly through the small island of Delos in the Aegean Sea, the legendary birthplace of Apollo, and through Delphi, the famous Apollonian oracular centre not far from Athens. Further on, and strikingly, it passes through an impressive string of ancient cultic places devoted to the Archangel Michael, San Michel del Gargano, Tempio di San Michel in Perugia, San Galgano, Sarca de San Michela della Chiusa, Mont Saint Michel, St. Michael's Mount, Skellig Michael, and others. In fact, in ancient Christianity, Michael was often invoked and worshipped in places where Mithria have been found, as in Sutri, Heidelberg, Regal, and many others. Michael killing the dragon and protecting the souls serves much the same function as Mithra's killing the bull and giving directions to the souls entering and leaving mortality. Is Saint Michael and Mithra one and the same thing? The creation of the world is the central episode of Mithraic mythology. According to the myths, the sun god sent his messenger, the raven, to Mithra and ordered him to sacrifice the bull. Mithra executed the order reluctantly, and in many reliefs he is seen turning aside his face in sorrow. But at the very moment of the death of the bull, a great miracle happened. The white bull was metamorphosed into the moon. The cloak of Mithra was transformed into the vault of the sky, with the shining planets and fixed stars. From the tail of the bull, and from his blood sprang the first ears of grain and the grape, and from the genitals of the animal ran the holy seed which was received by the mixing bowl. And it is said that every creature on the earth was shaped with an admixture of the holy seed. One Mithraic hymn begins, Thou hast redeemed us too by shedding the eternal blood. The plants and the trees were created, day and night began to alternate, the moon started her monthly cycle, the seasons took up their round dance throughout the year, and thus time as we know it was created. But then, awakened by a sudden light, the creatures of the dark emerged on the earth. The serpent licked the bull's blood, a scorpion tried to suck the holy seed from the genitals. On these reliefs, a line is often also seen, with the bull's death and the creation of the world. The struggle between good and evil began, thus is the condition of human life. The raven symbolises air, the lion fire, the serpent the earth, and the mixing bowl water. So the four elements, air, fire, earth and water, came into being, and from them all things were created, whom emerged from the dark. After the sacrifice, Mithra and the sun god banqueted together, then Mithra mounted the chariot of the sun god and drove with him across the ocean, through the air, to the end of the world. What did the Romans know exactly about the Zoroastrian ancient god? You see, these similarities between cultures and religious division acts as a bridge to the previous associations. The exact point from the Zoroastrian tradition may not have been lost to the Romans as it is to us now. Mithra is depicted in the Roman tradition as slaying the bull, treading on the beasts of the earth. The witnesses must have thought that they had been spared, hence the association with sparing the soul. The witnesses were simply protected from their vantage, because this event was indiscriminate and it assimilates over time into the Christian tradition, and it's possible that the figure of Mithra assimilates to Michael the Archangel, whom is like God in the Bible, and in the Bible, Michael is the only one identified as an Archangel. But what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching. Slowly, the life has been squeezed out of the Lost History Channel, but we are fighting back, and fighting back hard every day. This is the channel that refuses to go away, but things are tough, and we do need your support. Please take a moment and check out the links provided. Please thumbs up this video if you have appreciated it, and please comment below. Audience engagement is vital for this channel, so please engage with this channel as much as possible. Let them be seen for the destruction they are causing us. Thank you.